After waiting a couple weeks to see it, I finally saw Joel Cornish's The Kid Who Would Be King. This is his first film since Attack the Block, another movie of his that I haven't seen that I've been meaning to. Uh, he seems to be doing these movies that are taking place in modern day, but have some kind of sci-fi fantasy twist to them. Where Attack of the Block was about aliens, The Kid Who Would Be King is about King Arthur coming to the suburban life of a British boy. The Kid Who Would Be King is an interesting idea, I think. To make a movie based on the Arthur legend, bringing it to the suburbs, having it sort of be like the style of the Goonies where a bunch of characters get together where they have conflicts but they're all different and they end up finding a way to work together to fight old style mythological creatures. I, I think it's great and I think this movie in the age of Marvel and so many sequels and remakes and animated movies that really aren't that great I think it's cool that this movie comes out and says, hey, here's an original fresh idea for kids to watch, a movie for them to love just like your parents love, something like The Sandlot or The Goonies or uh, even something like E.T. or Back to the Future. You know, this movie just has a lot of those elements in it. It's a lot of weird ideas coming together to make for a good movie. Now, uh, I feel kind of bad because the movie's not making much money. And, I don't know, it's like the director I feel like deserves better than that. And I think this movie deserves better than that because when I saw the movie, I saw it in a packed theater on a snow day uh, because, you know, all the kids can't go to school so they all have to stay home. No, they actually go to the theater. <laughs> but I saw it in a the theater uh, packed with kids and as the children were leaving, I just kept hearing about how they all loved the movie. And I was like, this is really cool because there was a lot of, uh, not complex ideas, but there were interesting, uh, different morals than what you'll get in other movies. There were, uh, scenarios that you usually don't see. In a couple of years, they'll be like, hey, remember that movie that nobody saw but I saw? It was great. You should watch it. It's gonna become something like that. Probably a cult classic already in the making. Now, <laughs> I say all that, but honestly, the movie just didn't do much for me. But this was a case where I think it is just because it's not for me. I think if I was at the age that a lot of people who were enjoying this were, like, you know, the 7 to 10 year old crowd, I think that is the perfect uh, age group for this movie, I think I would have enjoyed it more. It's not like it's got dumb jokes or a bunch of uh, fart humor or stuff, toilet stuff like that. No, it's like actually uh, good humor for the most part. But it's just humor that I'm not normally a fan of. I don't really know how to explain it. It's just something that I myself wouldn't normally find funny or interesting. And the characters, I, I could see people really liking them for the most part, though. I, I thought a lot of them were really uninteresting and kind of boring. There's a great scene towards the end involving the main character that I think works really well and is one of the more unique things I've seen in a kid's movie, but for the most part, I don't know. I really did buy that they were uh, real characters at least, you know, and they were having these uh, real life conflicts, squabbles, you know, they, they were talking and acting like real kids for the most part, I would, I, I guess. Kids could watch this and relate to it in some sort of way. But for me personally, I just thought the characters weren't interesting and I didn't find this story interesting and by the time we got to the climax, I was surprised that there's yet another climax. Yeah, this movie does that thing where you think the movie's over and it's really not. And for some people, they probably were like, oh, this is a cool, it, it was a fall, it was a false ending and there's actually this whole other cool thing going on where they go to the school and they're dressing up as knights and it's all this stuff that if I was that age, I would love because I'd be like, man, wouldn't it be amazing if that happened in real life? But as at my age, it's, I feel bad because this is the first time where I saw something like that. And I was like, you know, I, I, I don't think that's really that cool anymore. I'm not really interested in that. And I feel bad. Like right now, I'm giving this movie a two and a half out of five stars. But that really has a lot to do with the fact that it has a good production design. It has really cool looking effects. The effects are actually really good. And 
I think the story is well done. I, I think a lot of the stuff in this movie is good, but there's other stuff that I just really couldn't attach myself to, and I don't know if it's because it was bad, if it just didn't work, or if it's not working for me. And I'm thinking more that it's not working for me. So, yeah, if, if you've got kids out there, it's too bad the Lego Movie 2 is coming out, but go bring them to go see this, because this is something original. Out right now, it deserves more than what it's getting, and it's going to be a cult classic for sure, but it's not going to be my cult classic. So what do you think of The Kid Who Would Be King? Do you think it deserves more attention than it's been getting? Or did you see it and, I don't know, did you think it was really bad? Or are you like me, where you're kind of in between? You want it to do good, but not really for yourself. Uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think.